um, we got a question from homework we're going to go over. Um, so we have a rational function, f of x. This is from class 31. It's the last problem in class 31. Um, it models the number of arrests per 100,000 drivers for driving under the influence of alcohol as a function of a driver's age. Okay, so I want to graph this function. And if you don't have a graphing calculator, right, you use the free GeoGebra. So 27725. Now, keep in mind that um, the problem I'm doing right now might have slightly different numbers than you had. Right. 27725. And then times x minus 14. And then that whole thing is my numerator, so I need parentheses around that whole thing. And then divided by, the denominator is x squared minus 9, so parentheses minus 9. And then minus 5x. Okay, and then we have to use a window. They told us to look from 0 to 70 for x and 0 to 400 for y. So I need x to go to 70, so I'm just going to drag my axis till I can see 70. And then y, I'm going to drag my axis till I can see 400. There we go. So that's going to be my graph, right? Ah, uh, yeah. The grid on. OK, so there's my grid. All right, so it looks like it's definitely B, yeah. All right, so let's go in there and put that in, B. Oh, it's D? OK. <laughs> What's the, oh, I guess it's the where the, uh, where the x axis is, yeah. OK, good. All right, so describe the trend shown by the graph. The graph shows a rapid increase as x approaches a maximum in the upper half of the domain, and then a gradual decrease as x increases past the maximum. Yeah, I think it's that one. What? <laughs> oh, the lower half of the, oh, OK. Okay. How do I get rid of this? Whatever. Yep. Okay. Use the zoom and trace features or the maximum feature. Oh, go away. There we go. Um, or the maximum feature of your graphing utility. Find the age that corresponds to the greatest number of arrests. Okay. So in GeoGebra, there's a command called extremum, which you would have learned in um, project three. Extremum, and I want to do f of x. Uh, did I spell it wrong? Extrema, maybe. Uh, so you have to give the function a start value and an end value for x. All right, so we have to do f of x comma, we'll start at 15, and end at, so it looks like it's a, somewhere around 25. So I'm going to start at 15 and maybe go to 30. And I wanted to find the extreme value in between. So I get 24.93 comma 370.1. So I'm going to put in 24.93 round to the nearest tenth, so 24.9. I, I don't know. I'd have to look at what you were doing. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sure. Okay, so let's look at our schedule. Um, so we're doing two lessons today. I'm going to try to squeeze them both into my, our hour and 10 minutes together. Um, but if you can, um, and, you, and we need to, I'd appreciate it if you stayed as long as it takes for us to finish. If you have to go, you have to go. Um, there'll be video of everything that I do on the board, um, and you can work through the activities on your own. But the reason we're doing those two things today is because class is going to be canceled 
on Wednesday. And that's just for this class. It's not like all of GCC. Okay, so let's look at the preview exercises for class 32. So according to USA Today, 2015 pay raises expected to be 3% next year. So um, Gary Strauss, author, states that U.S. employers are planning to give pay raises averaging 3% next year. This pay rate is similar to previous years and is keeping the average employee's pay slightly ahead of inflation. The article also claims that the median and annual salary among the nation's 106.6 million workers is now about $40,560. All right, so we're going to let T represent the number of years after 2014. So 2014 is your zero. S of T is going to represent the median salary at time T. So what will the median income of U.S. employees be in 2015 if we increase by 3%? So you can take the 2014 salary and add 3% to the 2014 salary. Okay, so our 2014 salary is $40,560. Add 3% of $40,560. You get $40,560 plus $1,217. $41,770. Okay, if the median salary of U.S. employees continues to increase each year at this same percentage rate, 3% every year, we're going to fill in this table showing the yearly median salary from 2014 to 2020. All right, so we already did 2015. So in 2016, we have to figure out what our yearly increase is. So we have to take our previous year's salary and multiply it by 3%. And that will figure out the amount in dollars that our raise is going to be. So I do 0.03 times 41777. And that means my, my salary raise is going to be $1,253.31. In 2016. Add that to the previous year's salary plus 41777 and now we're at $43,030.31. So then we just keep doing this, right? So I multiply times 3%. That gives me my raise for the next year. I'm just going to round to the nearest penny. Plus four three zero three zero three one, and you get four four three two one point two two. All right, so I'm just going to try to quickly do this times one point zero three. This is a shortcut for raising something by three percent instead of multiplying by three percent and then adding to itself. You can just multiply by 1.03. Why does that work? It's greater than 100%, right? You get to keep 100% of your old salary. You're making all of your old salary plus 3% more. So this is the 1 represents 100% what you used to make plus an additional 3%. So you multiply by 1.03, and we get 4.5650.86. Times 1.03, and we get 47020.38 times 1.03, and now our salary is $48,430.99. So if I were to plot these really, really rough, um, I go somewhere between 40,000 and 48,000. So let's just put in, I've got a little break here. I'm not starting at zero. I'm going to start at 40 and go to 50. And this is thousands of dollars. And then this will be 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I start at just about $40,000. Oops, 
in 2014. 2015, I'm at 41, almost 42. So this is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, close enough. Okay, so it's 41, 42-ish, okay. And then 43-ish. 45, almost 46. One, two, three, four, five, six, almost 46. 47 in 2018. And then 48 and a half. Like that. Why does that one look weird? Probably because my scale was bad. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, because that big jump there. Oh well. So are the yearly salary increases the same or constant from year to year? Is your raise the same amount of money? No. It actually increases. The amount of money that you make in your raise increases. Okay, so that's a no, it's not constant. Okay. And if I graph it, do I expect a line? Why not? Because the, because the amount is not changing by the same amount, right? The raise is not changing by the same amount every year. Okay. So I did this kind of badly. I should have been more careful with my drawing here. It kind of looks like a line, but it's actually a curve like that. Okay, so that example um, introduces us to the idea of a quantity growing at a constant percent rate. Functions that increase at a constant percent rate are called exponential functions. So let's see if we can develop a general formula for the median salary from the preview exercise. We want a formula for S in terms of T here since 2014. So here we're talking about this Y you can just multiply by 1.03. Because you start with 40560 you're going to make all of that the next year plus an additional 3%. So you multiply by 1.03 to mean keep 100%, add an additional 3%. And I'm not actually going to multiply it out. I'm just going to leave it as 40560 times 1.03. And then the next year, you take your previous year's salary, 40560 times 1.03, and you multiply by 1.03 again to increase it by 3%. So your new salary after two years is actually 40,560 times 1.03 squared, because you multiplied by 1.03 twice. Okay. So after three years, you're gonna multiply by 1.03 again, and again, and again, and repeated multiplication is an exponent. That's why we call this an exponential function. So in three years, my salary would be, would be 40,560 5, 40, times 1.03 cubed. In five years, it would be 40,560 times 1.03 to the fifth. In 10 years, I would have 40,560 times 1.03 to the tenth. And after T years, I would have 40,000. 40,560 times 1.03 to the t, however many years have passed. So that's my, that's my formula. That's how I could figure out my salary any, in any given year. I could just plug in a 30 and I would know my salary in 30 years. So we can write the salary function as s of t your salary after two years is your initial salary, 40,560, times your growth factor, which is 1.03. We call it a growth factor because the word factor means what you multiply by. Okay. Um, and if that number is bigger than one, it's growing. If you multiply by a number bigger than one, things are going to get bigger. And you multiply by that number every year for two years, so you raise to the T. 
So in general, we can apply this rule to all exponential functions. Any exponential function has the formula a times b to the t. In our case, a was the initial salary, b was the growth factor 1.03. A can't be zero or the whole function will be zero, and B has to be positive to make it a, an exponential function. So A is your initial value, meaning the value at t equals zero. You could also think of it as the y-intercept. And B is our base. It's called our growth factor or our decay factor. Yes? No, um, I'll answer that in a second. Go ahead. What if it's decay? Um, so if you're decaying, you don't get to keep 100%, right? If you're losing 2%, how much are you keeping? 98%. So um, when you have decay, B is not negative, it's, but it's a number smaller than 1. Yeah. So that's, that's what I was saying. That's what comes next here. So your growth factor is found by doing 1 plus r. r is the decimal, decimal representation of your percent rate of change. And if you have exponential growth, r has to be positive, and that makes b bigger than 1. But if there's exponential decay, then your rate of growth is negative. And when you do 1 plus a negative, b ends up being a number between 0 and 1. So that gives you decay. All right, so just a little note, some definitions for an exponential function, including our textbook, set the a value to 1 to, to be the most um, sort of easy to analyze case. They let a be 1, and they just look at b to the t. All right, so here's a few examples of exponential functions. f of t equals 2 to the t. Okay. Is this growth or decay? Growth, yeah, because you're multiplying by 2 over and over and over again, right? Because f of 3 would be 2 cubed, f of 4 would be 2 to the 4th, so your values are getting bigger. So this is growth. Okay. Our growth or decay factor, what number are you multiplying by over and over again? 2. All right, so if you're doubling, think of this in terms of money. If your money is doubling every year, wouldn't that be awesome, right? If your money was doubling every year, what percent rate change are you getting? What percent interest are you making yearly? 100%, yeah. You get to increase your money by 100% of what you currently have, yeah. So doubling is, corresponds to a 100% rate of change. All right, so here's another one. 100 times 1.012 to the t. This is um, more realistic if we think of this as money, right? Is this an, a growth or decay example? Growth, because you're multiplying by a number bigger than 1. So this is growth. My growth factor is 1.012, right? Because the word factor just means what are you multiplying by, 1.012. So what's my um, percent rate, if you think? 1.2%, yeah. Because 0.012 is your decimal um, that represents your percent rate of change. So you change 0.012 to a percent by multiplying by 100, and you get 1.2%. Okay, so that one is much more realistic making 1.2% interest, maybe in a savings account or something. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's look at G. Is that growth or decay? Decay, because you're multiplying by a number smaller than 1. 200 times something smaller than 1 is going to give you less than 200, right? So this is decay. And my decay factor is just 0.886. That's what I multiply by. And what's my percent rate of change here? 11.4, yep. And, and should I make that a positive or a negative? Negative, because you're losing 11.4%. Yep. 
negative. So you look, look at that 0.886 and you think of that as 88.6%. You get to keep 88.6% because that's what you're multiplying by. right? So you're taking 88.6% of $200. That's how much is still in your bank account, which means you lost 11.4%. All right, there's really only two flavors of graphs for exponential functions, growth and decay. Okay. So I just did sort of the simplest examples I could. I did 2 to the x and 1 half to the x. So growth, you have um, uh, an a value, and it gets bigger, right? And exponential decay, you start at some value and it gets smaller. All right, so let's fill out some uh, information about these things. Let's look at the growth one first. What's the domain of this, of this graph? Negative infinity to infinity. And if you, if you look at the formula, you can plug in anything in for x, right? There's no restrictions there. So negative infinity to infinity. Um, the range? 0 to infinity. This never goes below the x-axis. right? There is no x value that you can raise 2 to to get a negative number. Right? You raise 2 to the 0, you get 1. You raise 2 to negative numbers, you get 1 over 2 to that thing. So it ends up being always positive. So your range is 0 to infinity. Is this thing 1 to 1? Remember the, the test for one-to-one -one is the horizontal line test? Yes, it passes the horizontal line test, so yes, it's one-to-one. -one. What's its y-intercept? One. If I wanted to be specific, I would use the whole point, zero, one. Any x-intercepts? None. It never touches the x-axis. Horizontal asymptote. Y equals zero. Yeah, the x-axis is a line that your graph approaches but never touches or crosses. So that's the line y equals zero. And then let's describe the end behavior. As x approaches infinity, as x approaches negative infinity, I want to know what happens to f of x. Okay, so we look at the graph. As the x values get bigger, what's happening to the y values? They go to infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, what happens to the y values? They get close to zero. Awesome. All right, let's answer all those same questions about sort of a generic exponential decay function. So that was growth. Now we're going to look at decay. Domain, same, negative infinity to infinity. Range is the same, 2, 0 to infinity. 1 to 1, yep, passes the horizontal line test. Y-intercept, 0, 1 again. X-intercepts, none. Horizontal asymptote? the x-axis again. So everything was the same so far. The only thing that's going to be different is end behavior, in which case this is going to reverse. Right? So as x goes to infinity, f of x will go to 0. And as x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to infinity. All right, so I'm going to have you work through some problems. Um, I do want to come back together to do the lecture for the next part of class. So let's make sure 
we come back together by quarter of. So we'll spend like 20 minutes or so on these activities and then we'll start the next lecture. Okay, so the size of an initial rabbit colony um, at t equals zero, t in years, which settled on the planet of rabbit utopia was a thousand rabbits. Okay. If the rabbit population increases by a thousand rabbits per year, I want to write a formula that models the population growth and fill in this table. Okay. So we grow by a thousand per year. So we start with a thousand, the next year we have two thousand, the next year we have three thousand, then four thousand, then five thousand, then six thousand, right? So P of T, we just say, okay, well, we started with a thousand and we added a thousand every year for T years. So one thousand plus one thousand T. What kind of function is that? Linear. It's got MX plus B form, right? If I were to graph these points, they would fall in a perfect line. All right, but let's say instead of adding a thousand rabbits every year, the rabbit population is going to double every year. It's probably more realistic, right, in terms of rabbits, right? So I, if I start with a thousand, the next year I have two thousand, the next year I have four thousand, right? And then the year after that, I'm going to have eight thousand, then sixteen thousand, then thirty-two thousand. Right. So in order to help me write an equation for P of T, I'm, I, I have a little template here that I want to rewrite each of my population values as 1,000 times 2 to the something. So my 1,000 I could rewrite as 1,000 times 2 to the 0, because what is 2 to the 0? 1. So that's just 1,000 times 1. It gives me 1,000. 2 to the first is 2, so it's 1,000 times 2, which is 2,000. So my next one would be 1,000 times 2 squared, because that says 1,000 times 4 gives me the 4,000. Then I have 1,000 times 2 cubed. Then 1,000 times 2 to the 4th. Then 1,000 times 2 to the 5th. Okay. And what do you notice about the year and the exponent I put on the 2? They're always the same. So if I want to write a formula for P of t, I would say we'll start with a thousand and we double it every year for t years. So 1,000 times 2 to the t. It's a lot of rabbits, yep. What kind of function is that? Exponential. Okay, so I have three functions here. They give me the population in thousands for three different cities, A, B, and C, where T is in years. Which of the cities have populations that are changing exponentially? B and C. Yep. Because they both have a variable in the exponent. What's the initial population for city A? 300,000. Yep. If T is zero, you get 300. City B, initial population is 270. Again, if you make T zero, anything to the zero is one, so you get 270,000 people. And city C, my initial population is 600,000 people. Make T zero. 0.978 to the 0 is 1. Anything to the 0 is 1. So that's a 600 times 1, initial population 600. So city A. Somebody describe in words what's happening to city A. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. So it starts with 300,000. at 300,000 and adds 1,300 people each year. So that is growing linearly. When you add the same amount every year, that's linear growth. City B, somebody else explain what's happening to City B. It's exponential. 
yes, it's going to grow. The amount of people it grows by is going to increase each year. 2.1% is its growth percent growth rate. So City B starts at 270,000 and grows by 2.1% each year. Which means that the number of people you add each year is going to get bigger. Every year is going to get bigger. How about City C? How is it changing? Its population is decreasing. Yep. You can tell that because the growth factor, 0.978, is less than 1. So what percentage is it decreasing by? 2.2%. Yeah. So you get to keep, right? City C keeps 97.8 of its population every year, which means it's losing 2.2%. So C starts at 600 starts at 600,000 and loses 2.2% yearly. All right, so how can we identify a linear function versus an exponential function if you're just looking at a table of values? So this table represents values from a linear function and an exponential function. Can you identify which one is which? Any thoughts? F of x is linear. How can you tell x? Constant change each year, yeah. Plus 10 is 40, plus 10 is 50, plus 10 is 60. Okay, so is the delta x constant? Right, so that's what you ask yourself. Is delta x constant? For f, it is. For f, delta x is 10. Right? For g, delta x is not constant. Because for g, the change goes 300, 390, more than 390. So it's not constant change in. Oh, and that actually should be change in y, right? Oh, sorry. Okay, for both of them, the change in x is constant. Delta x is 5, right? The change in my x values, 20, 25, 30, 35. So delta x is 5, yep. So change in y for f, so change in f of x, is 10, right? But the change in g of x is not constant. But what is constant about g of x? The rate, yeah, like if you look at a ratio, 1300 over 1000, Uh, 1.3, I think it's exactly 1.3, yeah. And then what about 1690 over 1300? Get a calculator. Sixteen ninety over 1300, also 1.3. 1728 over 1690. Oh, I think I messed up. 1690 times 1.3. Yeah, Linda told me I had a typo here. That's not a number. This is 2197, and this one is 2856.1. And then just ignore that one. All right, so if I do 2197 divided by 1690, I get 1.3. So what I have is a constant ratio. Yeah. 
So that means g is exponential because there is a constant multiplicative factor. A, a thousand times 1.3 is 1300, times 1 1.3 is 1390, times 1 1.3 is 2197, times 1 1.3 is 2856. So if you want to check if something is linear or exponential, you look for constant differences or a constant ratio in the y values. So to summarize, the growth of a linear function is additive. You're always adding the same amount, like when we add 1,000 ra rabbits every year. The growth of an exponential function is multiplicative. So each year that passes, you multiply by the same number. So here's some general formulas for linear and exponential functions. Linear functions, your output, you start with some initial quantity, and you add your rate of growth times your input. For exponential, you start with some initial quantity, and you multiply by a, a growth or decay factor, and you raise it to the amount of time that has passed. Okay. All right, so if you finished the previous activities, you should start these. If not, you can pick up where you left off.